thank you for that introduction. Uh, in today's session, we are going to be diving into Saudi Arabia's hospitality sector, something we're all quite excited about. And we'll talk about some of the tra transformative projects that we've seen being planned and delivered uh, over the past three years. So three of our panelists here, represented by PIF companies, spearheading a lot of the growth that we see in the kingdom. Uh, and we also have representation, of course, from the Tourism Development Fund, uh, which we can get into into more detail uh, a little later. So I'm aware that we're in the UAE. Uh, perhaps not everybody is as familiar with Saudi Arabia's latest uh, sort of tourism strategy or what the 2030 vision is. Uh, so perhaps, uh, Bader, you know, since you have a helicopter view, um, you could sort of like to briefly speak about you know, what the vision is for Saudi Arabia's hospitality sector uh, before we go into your individual companies. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and share the stage with my ex uh, esteemed colleagues and friends. I think the link between hospitality and tourism and Vision 2030 is very clear and we don't even have to go beyond the three pillars of Vision 2030. Vibrant society, uh, uh, vibrant society and uh, economy, and an ambitious nation. Ambitious nation, we're targeting to be among the top five in tourism globally by 2030. No sector uh, matches tourism in creating jobs, especially in, uh, in rural areas and in communities that currently suffer from unemployment. One in every five jobs globally today is supported by tourism. So that's why tourism is such an important sector in the narrative of the Vision 2030. And I think one of those, the biggest uh, projects, at least that I'm, I'm aware of, is, 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 is rural Medina, at least in terms of scale. Um, you know, officially announced in August last year. Uh, is, is Rua Al Medina the only project that the company is working on, or are there other projects also that, that are sort of uh, in the works? Uh, thank you, Ali, uh, for uh, actually uh, getting me into this panel, and uh, I'm glad to be with the uh, distinguished, actually, panel members. Actually, Royal Medina is mainly focused about Royal Medina project. It's the main project. We have other small projects that we are working on, uh, but Royal Medina by itself is a massive project which consists about delivering 47,000 rooms by 2030. And it's actually an urban development within the city of Medina, close to the Prophet Mosque, it's actually uh, a great project, and since uh, our Crown Prince launched the master plan and the infrastructure work, there has been a lot of work has been done in the ground. Uh, we actually took over the land, and we made all the detours around the uh, urban development. We uh, uh, completed, actually, uh, design of 5,000 rooms, we signed a uh, hotel management agreement with uh, actually three companies, with Marriott, Accor, and uh, Hyatt for this 5,000 rooms. The, actually, we have ongoing on the ground right now uh, value of contract under execution more than 5.3 billion real. Uh, the progress of the infrastructure, mainly it's Tunnel, tunnel work and roads and utility and infrastructure, uh, which actually bring the whole development ready for the vertical assets. Uh, next month, we will go to the market for uh, the tendering for the 5,000 rooms. We also have another 7,000 rooms are under design right now in the concept stage, and also another 8,000 rooms will start uh, design uh, in November. So we, are, we receive all the bids from the design consultants, and in November we will, we will, we will start that. So we are talking about 20,000 rooms before the year end at different stages, uh, will be under design or under construction or an, in the middle of the design. So it's actually, it's a lot of work that we have to deliver this actually major urban development. As I said, we have other, other uh, you know, projects, but they are much, much smaller 
scale than than the main project Royal Medina. Right, and scale is the name of the game. I mean, some markets don't even have 30,000 rooms at all, right? And this is what you're trying to deliver in a, in a very short period of time. I think one of the challenges that you have as a PIF company that perhaps others might not is that you are laser focused in one micro market and it's very, very dense. So how are you able to sort of differentiate within such a small geographical area and do you have any concerns about sort of logistics and support services uh, uh, that come with hotels? Uh, it's, 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 it's actually for, for, for Royal Medina, yes, we are very, very close to the center of Medina. Medina actually, uh, you know, it's a very, very old city. It's actually Medina exists more than 3,000 years. So we have a lot of uh, logistical issue. However, Medina is very, very simple in terms of transportation and so on. Yes, definitely, for bringing this magnitude of work around Medina, where it's where a lot of visitors, you know, uh, thousands of, uh, you know, or hundreds of thousands every day around the mosque and the central area. It's it's actually a logistical issue. Uh, however, we we are we have a plan to. Uh, to work around around that to deliver this massive project. Interesting, and, and uh, Dr. Fahad, for us, for you're in some senses the new kid on the block. Um, been announced very very recently. Um, you know, there's some sort of continuity with you know what was stick bit before, and now you sort of been relaunched. Can you talk a little bit about how you transition from one to the other, and and what the objectives are of the newly formed us for? Uh, definitely with pleasure, Rawashi. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the, uh, you know, the, the, the owner of this uh, beautiful platform or the uh, manager of it. Um, actually, we are a two years uh, old kid. So, yes, we've been launched uh, officially and announced as as far as the brand name of uh, one of uh, BIF 100% uh, subsidiary. The company has been in the market for almost two years. And, uh, you know, originally it was called Saudi Tourism Investment Company. And as a brand name, that's as a, the commercial name, but as, as a brand name, it's been launched officially as per BIF guidelines recently by BIF almost two months ago. However, as far as about uh, building destinations uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, focusing mainly on uh, tourism value chain, in general, so as far uh, as working kingdom wide, uh, most of the beautiful cities that exist in Saudi Arabia, uh, where each city has its own DNA, its own you know characteristics, uh, culture, tradition, climate, uh, you know, it's a totally different uh, landscape for us whenever we go to any city within the kingdom, because we have to respect the DNA of that city. We have to make sure that we really capitalize on uh, the content on the, and the culture and uh, you know everything that exists within the city. So that's as far as mandate. And luckily, we've been in the in the market for two years. We've announced, alhamdulillah, a couple of projects recently. So then, what role would you say as far plays in terms of private development? Are you sort of a funding institution? Are you a co-investor, or do you develop alone, or is it a mix of of all three of these? Uh, one of the uh, BIF objective uh, in the kingdom is really to uh, work hand in hand with the private sector. So our model is to invest, co-invest with the private sector to uh, capitalize on the know-how of the private sector and empower the private sector and, uh, and provide them with the right platform uh, to co-invest uh, in uh, those destinations, and therefore it's a win-win for us uh, as far or uh, and fulfilling the objective, one of the objective of the BIF. Um, as far today uh, is about uh, making uh, cities uh, and making uh, destinations within those cities. So we really uh, ensure that when we partner with the right private sector slash developers, we are really looking for value money, not looking for money, we're looking for the know-how that the private sector will bring uh, to the destination and bring also to BIF. So we are an investment company. 
we create uh, subsidiaries um, for each destination or one subsidiary for multi-destination, uh, capitalizing on the private sector. And this is what we have been doing so far. We've already created uh, two subsidiaries, one in Al Baha, which was uh, recently announced a couple of a week ago, uh, in fact, in the Cityscape uh, Riyadh, and one was announced uh, this morning uh, in the VHS, uh, which is a sub another subsidiary with the own group uh, catering for making uh, the destination in Yambu. Interesting. And 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 Mark, if I can go go to you, a, a lot of this this sort of work and focuses on new builds. Uh, creating new destinations. Mm. Um, the boutique group, from my understanding, is slightly different. Um, you know, how, what is your mandate, and, and, and are you looking at, at a new builds at all, or mm -hmm. is it redevelopment, or is it a mix of the, mm. of the two? Thank you, and thank you uh, to my colleagues uh, for the attention uh, for Saudi Arabia and tourism. It's a very important part. So as uh, for boutique group, uh, we're just a small part of Vision 2030. We only have a few hundred uh, hotel rooms at this time, three palaces. And um, we were entrusted with these palaces from His Royal Highness. Uh, they are palaces of former kings and have very deep uh, stories of culture and heritage of each of the kings and the families and the guests that they entertain. So this is what we do is a, uh, as a hospitality company. We will be the first Saudi uh, hospitality company and to provide that uh, exceptional service, uh, that generosity of uh, the Saudi people and express that in these memorable experiences. So uh, we're renovating and restoring these palaces, which takes time and it takes a lot of love and attention to detail. And we're in the uh, uh, design and development and construction uh, process now and building a hospitality team. And I think that's the most important because these palaces are very special. And uh, when our guest profile, we are target the very top of the uh, regional and international travelers for our uh, palaces. And we want to provide that exceptional service, that personalized service. I think that's really what's the most important because that will be the memories that will bring people back. And um, I believe Saudi hospitality will be the new benchmark in the world globally uh, because Saudis are so generous, they're so caring. It's that embracing of, uh, of, of each other and a guest, especially to foreigners, as we heard the speaker talk about her experience with her family. Yeah. Really very, very special. And this will be the difference that we make uh, at Boutique. So, so I'm not at all a, a, a cost guy by any, any means, but what I have seen in the past is that sometimes when you redevelop something, it can actually be more expensive than building it new, which for me doesn't make sense because you're, mm -hmm. it's sort of a, almost an impairment that you have a structure that you're trying to, mm -hmm. trying to build. Is that something that you've come, come across in any of your studies or something that you have to you sort of manage uh, in, your, in your projects? Vision uh, from His Royal Highness is, is not about cost. It's about the culture and heritage of the Saudi people in these beautiful palaces and express that to uh, the guests from Saudi, from the region, and from the world. That's the most important. It's about that experience. So it's not really 100% uh, ROI driven. It's more about, about, <laughs> about the broader, about the broader vision. The ROI is when guests and, uh, experience uh, palaces and uh, they speak about these uh, exceptional experiences, I, which you cannot deliver anywhere else. I believe Saudi is really the center of the growth for the tourism industry and the hospitality industry. And uh, as His Royal Highness said, Saudi Arabia is, uh, is the most success, is the successful uh, message of the 21st, 21st century. He just said that. And I believe it's true because when I talk to many uh, attendees here, they, they're in from uh, UAE and other destinations and talk about Saudi, how it's really having a, an impact, a positive impact on the tourism and uh, investments and business people and the people of, the, of uh, Saudi Arabia as well. Yeah, I think a lot of that, that growth is driven, um, you know, by, 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 of course, uh, 
the development at the at the governmental level, but also by by, by private development. And mm -hmm. it seems that more and more people are private developers, particularly, are leaning on institutions such as you know, mm -hmm. the Tourism Development Fund to sort of assist and support right. and, 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 and and drive things forward. Um, in Riyadh this year, I was in with your colleague uh, Wadan uh, in 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 May, and afterwards uh, I had a few people come up to me and ask me, okay, well, what is TDF, how does it fit in the whole ecosystem? Is it a PIF company? Does it sit alongside it? And you know, does it do its own projects? So, I mean, would you be able to sort of talk a little bit about how the TDF helps uh, private developers? Absolutely. Um, just from a very simple point of view, to achieve Vision 2030, you have two engines that are, that are driving the development. You have PIF and all its subsidiaries, and then you have the National Development Fund with all the different development funds. One of them is the Tourism Development Fund. Together, we assist private sector or co-lead with the private sector or lead the development of whatever agenda that, that may be. From our side, we, we pride ourselves in supporting the investors throughout the entire investor journey. So having been in the market for around three years, we have reached around 28 billion uh, rials worth of projects committed. And what, what, what prides us most is that 75% of that value is from the private sector. So it's truly led by the private sector. We have also supported more than 900 SMEs through our various programs and services, uh, whether it's through our TDF Grow, which is our accelerator and uh, incubator, or through our co-developed programs with our partners, the banks, or the other government lending institutions. TDF is a financier. We provide debt, equity, and guarantees. We also provide matchmaking services where we, especially for international investor, investors, we would link them to local investors, operators, developers, landlords, putting all the pieces to the puzzle that results in a successful project. When you say get guarantees, what, what would that sort of So we like? would, how would, how were we able to reach 28 billion rials worth of project in three years? We couldn't have done that alone. We need to activate the banking sector along with us. And what we do, especially in, in riskier destinations, we would provide the bank guarantee to the bank so that they can lend uh, the local investors. So that's one, it's the risk. <coughs> Secondly, it's the reach as well. So we cannot go and reach every single investor in Saudi and in the globe. We have to rely on our partners. In this case, it's the banks that would have branches in these areas yeah. so they can easily know our requirements, communicate them to their clients, and, and increase our pipeline to, uh, towards achieving the targets. And, and, and it's not just hotels, is it? You, you also look at entertainment concepts uh, integrated into sort of hospitality-led developments, is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. We, we looked at that question when developing TDF's uh, strategy, and we realized that the opportunities are plentiful and require our support. So we, we support anything that impacts the tourist journey, from planning, arriving, enjoying their time here, and then flying back. So everything that touches the tourist experience is something that we do support. And in terms of leisure, Medina typically is not something that you would associate uh, with leisure at all. Um, but there is some degree of a, of a length of stay problem, historically anyway, because you know, pilgrims will, 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 will sort of go to Medina and sometimes there won't be enough sort of things to do other than uh, the religious aspect of, of Medina, which people go for. Are there are they any sorts of, within rural Medina, are there any sorts of maybe not leisure, but cultural anchors that you're working on within this, this master plan that, that will really help extend that length of stay for, for, for pilgrims going forward? Uh, actually, Ali Medina has some leisure projects by other, like Seven, for example, mm -hmm. sister company of PIF, is developing a small hub. Uh, so there is a leisure you know, uh, project or there are leisure projects in Medina. However, Royal Medina itself, you know, is the objective of it, of creating Royal Medina is to enrich the visitor experience and have a better experience to them, especially uh, the mass, you know, coming to Medina. <coughs> so within Royal Medina, actually the development itself is a very well, uh, you know, master planned. Uh, the land is about 1.5 million square meter. 63% of it is about 1 million. It is open space. Okay, so our leaders, our crown prince, 
wants to enrich the experience. So a developer with this scale giving, giving away about one million square meter for open space to enrich the experience because we will have a lot of people from different areas of the world. You know, the audience of Royal Medina or the uh, people would like to come are more than two billion worldwide. You know, it's, it's really a mess. Uh, so by itself, the area and the space and everything definitely will have a cultural experience in there. In addition, we in the northern part of the project, we have uh, about a quarter of a million square meter. We are devoting it for the Islamic civilization village. The design is way advanced in that project. It's basically to have uh, hubs, Islamic hubs within that uh, place, so people they can come and enjoy staying in the in 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 in, in the uh, hospitality assets and visiting visiting actually the the ICV. In addition, actually, uh, Medina has been a very very old city. Medina exists more than three thousand years. It has a lot of cultural site that uh, visitors from all over the world can come and visit Medina. It is a very, very rich city. Uh, and Medina city is part of the Medina province. And Medina province contains Al-Ula. It's not far from Medina. Medina city is only about 150 kilometer away from the red coast, from the major development. It's only about, uh, by high speed railway, is about an hour and a half from Jeddah, the vibrant city, you know? so. It, it's actually the experience, it's, it's actually to Medina is very, very, very rich in terms of uh, cultural and uh, also leisure and, uh, you know, uh, visiting the mosque and visiting the, the city from visitors from all over the world. And we see the influx actually coming to Medina, uh, you know, uh, these days. And how about you, Dr. Uh, Fahad? I mean, is leisure entertainment something important uh, or part of your, your overarching strategy? I know the uh, Gondor Mountain Resort and Adventure uh, Park has, seems to have leisure components to it. I mean, is this something that you're actively looking, looking at investing in? Uh, look, we are in the uh, city-making business. So we are in, once we go to a city, we look at it from a holistic <coughs> perspective, like uh, uh, Brother Badr mentioned. We, from the day the local visitor or the inter international visitor think of going to Saudi Arabia, we will be there uh, from day one through strategic acquisitions that we're going to be conducting soon on, on, on tour operators, uh, destination management companies, uh, and name it. To Working, of course, with our colleague TDF and uh, STA, uh, Saudi uh, Tourism Authority, marketing uh, destinations of Saudi Arabia, different cities. We are going to play a role where we're really hosting the visitor from the day he thinks of going to Saudi Arabia, from you know different journeys, uh, tourism pillars. What we have as part of the strategy is uh, religious tourism. Uh, traditional tourism slash cultural, like uh, Brother Ahmed mentioned. So the Arabia is full of beautiful sites. So we're, we're, we're investing in destinations, different mixed use offering, hospitality, entertainment, FMB, retail, whereby we really provide a full, a full journey, not necessarily in one parcel, in one destination. We really cover the full city by having different nodes within the city itself where the visitor can spend. Our target is a visitor's stay not less than seven nights per visit, where he will have everything there for the family, for the kids, for the adults mm. to play, enjoy the hospitality and the offering that we're offering. And every offering that we're doing is totally different in different cities that you know, capitalize and match the DNA of that city. So we will have wellness resort in one, uh, health and spa related resorts, uh, theme park resorts, uh, that's one. 
and we will be investing in whatever the city is uh, lacking. So we are really focusing on three pillars, making uh, assets class, mixed use offering for tourism. Two, we are active strategy in terms of investment locally or globally to bring the know-how to fulfill any gap that exists within cities. And we found a common areas for us to play within all those beautiful tier two destinations in Saudi Arabia where a lot of, a lot of lacking tourism product and services required. So we are going to buy companies within Saudi Arabia at the level of Saudi Arabia or globally to bring it and provide the service in those beautiful destinations within Saudi Arabia. And lastly, the third pillar that we're focusing on is the site uh, development. Site, which is either a, a heritage sites or cultural sites or a tra uh, religious in nature sites. So we're going to be also <laughs> playing a role in activating those sites. In fact, we were in Medina uh, three weeks ago where we found huge potential in Medina in terms of activating those beautiful religious or even traditional cultural sites that exist within those cities. So literally, in a nutshell, we are in the business of everything that is required to fulfill the whole value chain of uh, tourism. And Mark, I know your focus is a bit more micro uh, than perhaps some of the others. And I guess the same question from a different mm -hmm. perspective. Are you looking at integrating leisure components into any mm -hmm. of your uh, developments? And I guess as a follow on, you know, what sort of operating model are you, are you looking at? Are you looking at a management agreement? Yeah. Are you looking at a franchise? Are you looking at maybe creating your own, your own brand? Yeah. Uh, we have our own hospitality brand and we're really focused on that customer, that guest experience, that personalized experience. So we have three palaces, one in Alhamra and Jeddah, which is on the Corniche. So it, of course, it, uh, it's a beautiful destination for leisure and also for business. Uh, and uh, we have um, uh, a Twig uh, in Riyadh in the diplomatic quarters. Of course, it's business, but uh, we will also be an urban retreat because we have these beautiful villas and facilities overlooking the Wadi, which will be perfect for people uh, and their families to come for weekends and holidays. And uh, we have um, the Red Palace in the old city, uh, which is a was the first uh, concrete building and uh, a beautiful uh, iconic uh, palace uh, and uh, from King Fahad and it really has a deep history so we really it's about education of these uh, cultural experiences from the kings the families the guests they entertain and this is uh, the, the reason to stay so we have uh, you know we have these uh, uh, experiences for the for the guests uh, but also, I think what's really important is that uh, it's an extension of uh, the Saudi culture and history. And we have a culture and history uh, division. So it's each story of each palace is very, very unique. And that's the common thread. So we own the asset, but we also are in control of the experience. And I think that's the most important, that we manage it and control the, uh, the experience and the expectations from the guests. Fantastic. Okay, so I have been... Cut off a lot in my history at uh, FHS, so I, I can I can feel it's 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 happening now. <laughs> uh, so perhaps uh, we can just go go down and, and maybe uh, give any last thoughts about your your thoughts on, on Vision Twenty Thirty, and then where you think the industry is is, is going to go over the next sort of seven seven or so years. Actually, uh, His Royal Highness uh, just mentioned a couple of nights ago that we're working on Fission 2040 now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're close to close the gaps in 2030. I believe it's a great moment globally to be in Saudi Arabia. And people who are not thinking of Saudi Arabia, they are going to bust the train and hopefully we, they can catch it before 2040. So. And speaking of His Royal Highness. <laughs> Um, we had a target of 100 million visitors annually by 2030. We have already achieved 94 million yeah. visitors, and as a result, our target has been increased to 150 million. Price of success. So it shows that the opportunity is even growing and accelerating, and we're very excited to support any investor, developer, operator to enter 
or expand their business in Saudi Arabia. Uh, in uh, 2026, hopefully we will see some of the guests in, in Medina where the first, where the infrastructure will be complete and the first super block of the Tim Brands I mentioned will be completed. After that, the journey will continue to realize the vision until 2030 with the full realization of Royal Medina to enrich and facilitate uh, 30 million visitors for only that portion to uh, Medina and Mecca. Uh, Mark, I'll, I'll give you the last, the yeah. last word. <laughs> uh, we look forward to welcome uh, all our guests in uh, 2025 when our palaces, the three palaces open. And I uh, hope, inshallah, we'll have uh, some other palaces to announce uh, very soon. And we're very proud to be part of Vision 2030 and 2040, as His Highness is uh, projecting as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your attention. I'll hand it back to you, Thank you.